Hi and welcome to the ninth part of our 10 part series on how to use your camera. My name is Matt and I'm going to be explaining to you all of your camera's key settings so that you can start taking great pictures. Today we're going to be looking at your camera's viewfinder. This is what you use to compose your images and it contains lots of useful information which will help you decide what settings to use for each shot. If you have a DSLR, you'll also have an optical viewfinder. If you hold it up to your eye, you'll see that it contains much more than just a view of the scene. But what does all that information mean? The key exposure information will usually be displayed along the bottom of the viewfinder. You should see two figures. One will be your shutter speed and one will be your aperture. It's useful to keep an eye on these so that you can quickly check whether the settings are appropriate for a particular situation. The scale you see will show your exposure. When the marker is in the middle, the scene should be exposed correctly. If you use manual exposure or exposure compensation, you should see this move one way or the other, which will indicate either overexposure or underexposure. Keep an eye on this, as if it goes too far in either direction, you're likely to get a shot that's either too dark or too bright. You should check your camera's manual to see how much of the scene your viewfinder is displaying. Many DSLRs show around 95% of the scene, which means there is a little extra space around what you see that's been captured in the final image. You should bear this in mind when composing images with precision so that you end up with the image you want. Most viewfinders also display a few further pieces of information. The figure that drops after each image shows you how many more images you can fit on your memory card at the settings you're using. You may also see a further icon for when you're capturing images in black and white, and another for battery life, while your camera's ISO setting will often be displayed here too. If you want to get a 100% view of the scene, consider switching to your camera's live view option. Most cameras offer a full view of the scene when this is activated, so that what you see is exactly what you get. Again, check your camera's manual, as this should be stated within the camera's specifications. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Next time, we'll be looking at how to use the tripod. For more tips and advice, visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Google+, or check out wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.